This is... Wow! What, what a week. What a week. Politrix. Politics. Welcome to our What a Week, hashtag Politrix. Now, recently, President of a party's youth league changed a senior member's title from Minister of Employment to Minister of Unemployment. Some might agree, some will disagree. However, judging from your responses, there's no such debate regarding our next guest. Please give a wow welcome back to our Minister of Interpretation, Vutsang Mbuilwa, Prod Man. Good morning, morning, fresh, and morning to the followers and the viewers. Yeah, uh, at least my, my, my job is still safe here. Yes, sir. <laughs> Unlike the Minister of Unemployment. No, no, your, 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 your position is safe uh, for the rest of your life, so. Thank you. Coalition Forum, what on earth is that? Uh, well, uh, we should re remember that uh, the country has experienced after the 2021 uh, local elections, yes. local government elections. It has happened even before where there was a coalition in the city of Cape Town but mainly after the 2021 local government election, we experienced it in, in the entire country, you know, mm -hmm. and especially in the metros, where there was no outright winner of, of a metro or a municipality, and therefore they were being forced to go into coalition governments where one party, one small party, will engage with the other mm -hmm. in order to form a coalition government. So in fear of the fact that we discussed in the past that there is no law that is regulating coalitions in South Africa. Mm. There's been proposals tabled in Parliament to consider having a law or a regulation that will govern a coalition government. And we are going as a country to national elections you know, next year in 2024. Mm. And therefore, I think being proactive uh, for the very first time, but I've got my you know, different opinion on that, being proactive the, the ruling party, the ANC, or the government, mm -hmm. actually, because this was a government event, you know, uh, uh, the deputy president leading it as the leader of government business sure. decided to call all political parties into, you know, an engagement mm -hmm. to look at, you know, proposing and coming with ideas on what kind of regulation the government can have before the 2024 national election. Yes, sir. Because there are signs or there are talks that the, the ruling party may uh, lose, you know, 50%. And, 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 and the opposition will like that, obviously. But uh, in case that happens and there's no outright winner, what happens? Because mm. we don't want as a nation the chaos that we are seeing in municipalities that sure. has affected service delivery. So this engagement, it was, you know, it was about brainstorming, it was a workshop about that. However, one, there, are, there were political parties that, that, that boycotted the engagement, mm. you know, uh, uh, Surprisingly, the EFF, which is the, the third largest uh, uh, political party nationally in South Africa. Mm. But even those that attended, it was a two, three day session. Those who attended on the first day, like the Pan Africanist Congress of Azania, as well as the United Democratic Front, mm. they attended the first day, they left the whole process and they, they, they staged a walkout and mm. never attended. So the ANC and the DA and other small parties remained behind to, to complete the business of the day. But uh, I've, 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 I didn't see the reason why the UDM decided to walk out. But I've, I've read the official statement and listened to the PAC's statement to say, but the ANC has failed, and now they want to correct and clean their failures by using other parties. They want to use power. That's the first part. The second part, they said, even worse, mm -hmm. the basic document of the discussion that was held uh, last weekend it is, it is based on research and, and consultation with foreign governments, particularly the, colon, the former colonialists, you know, uh, yes, uh, yes, Britain yes. and so So the PC was like, we still have to go to Britain to do a case study on how to form coalition. So we still go to the former colonial master uh, that funded and sponsored apartheid, so it doesn't help. I, I think, personally, it is the ANC gradually preparing itself to say who will they go to bed with mm. in case they lose. That's the first part. Sure. The second part, I think it's also an effort in the right direction because mm. as a nation, we can't find ourselves operating. And we can't be in limbo yes, because limbo. now there's haggling and horse trading. Uh, uh, absolutely. I think it's a step in the right direction, mm. but I am just worried that the ruling party may use that to can actually clinch to power strategically. If the other parties working out and boycotting the process does not help, because at some stage the proposed document will go into parliament 
and and if these other parties mm. that they want to topple the ANC, whether as individual parties or collectively, are not part of the proposed documents. By the time that proposed document reaches parliament, mm. the ANC has a majority in parliament. They may use their majority with their allies so. to can make it into law which will actually make them to win this whole process. So working out and not contributing to the to the proposed document, it's very dangerous. But what I can tell you also is uh, any act or law of that nature that will impact on the electorate of the country will need a two-third majority sure. in parliament to become an act of parliament. Mm -hmm. So I think we are going to be observing this throughout the next coming months, how it unfolds. But I don't think it will be wise if we can, as a nation, go into the 2024 national elections uh, without a roadmap of how we are going to run the country. I see us going back to the government of national unity uh, uh, that happened pre-1996 constitution, you know, okay. where uh, even if the ANC had won the election, but they needed a consultation with other parties to be able to engage. They didn't just use their up, up, outright majority at the time until the constitution was passed in 1996. Sure. For those two years, I, I see us going into that phase from 2024 moving forward. Would you say the inclusivity that was the government of national unity served its purpose back, no, back it, then? No, it did serve its purpose. One, it stabilized the country politically mm -hmm. at that time, even when there were very serious challenges. Yeah. It stabilized the country. It served its purpose, its purpose because eventually after two years of the government of national unity being in place, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, the constitution of the Republic of South Africa, the 1996 constitution was signed into law, you understand? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it did, uh, whether the constitution is the best or the good constitution or not, it, it's a story for another day, but it served its purpose. Sure. And I think uh, uh, it was a collective engagement as well. You know, you, you should mm -hmm. recall that at that time we still had the National Party, the, the, the Democratic Alliance was still the Democratic Party and things like that. So it did serve its purpose. I am glad it did not stay longer. Two years was enough. Mm -hmm for a constitution to come to can give a roadmap. But our constitution needs a lot of revision. Uh, it was a compromised constitution. Why are we taking so long to review the constitution? Uh, I mean, I mean, we, we, we were often told it's a living uh, document exactly. that should evolve. But almost 30 years uh, down, the, uh, down the line, nothing. But there, definitely, there's been insignificant changes and amendments to the constitution. Insignificant, mm. minor ones. You know, we can talk of the language that was introduced on the, on the, on the 19th of July. You know, language, the the yes. sign language. It's, it's insignificant. Well, it's important, but I'm saying the fundamental, core fundamental funds of the new South Africa in inverted mm. commerce, mm. We have not seen that. That's why people are now lambasting the constitution to say, but this constitution we were sold, you know, a pie in the sky. It is not addressing the inequalities mm -hmm. of the past, especially economic inequalities. It is not addressing the land question. You know, one of the founding uh, liberation movement struggle was was the equal distribution of the land in terms of the population demographics. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and I always tell people when the ANC was formed in 1912 and they said, my year, they were talking about the return of the land to the people. So the constitution is actually not addressing the imbalance of the past. We can even see how people are fighting and struggling at the moment uh, with with squatter camps that becomes townships, you understand? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's actually accelerating and moving forward with the creation of the apartheid era. People are not supposed to be excited about township. I hear people talking about township economy. Township go, why do we want township economy? Why don't we want the suburb economy? Why don't we want the industrial economy? Why are we still reducing ourselves as a nation to the apartheid created township? And, 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 and we want to leave the suburbs for those who can afford and the elite. We, we, we were supposed to dismantle some of those things. Mm -hmm. and, and, and those things are enshrined in the constitution, you know, sure. the, the issue of minority rights. Yes, the majority rules, mm -hmm. but the minority rights are guaranteed. And we still see the constitution that protects, one, the atrocities of apartheid, two, that protects land ownership or economic ownership by foreign nationals. And, and by foreign nationals, I don't mean Africans, as many people think, you know, including Europeans who are still owning mines in South Africa. Mm. And, and we, we, it's 30 years, as you said. It's been a long time. But I think the delay is the, is, is the unwillingness of politicians. I don't think there's rebellious politicians who says enough is enough. Mm. And, and the ANC, they should have used their majority. It would have addressed quite a number of things. It would have addressed economic issues. It would have addressed even employment issues. I know there's labor laws. But we still have people in farms 
this week already, there were, uh, somebody was killed in a farm in Pumalanga, and you know, uh, off air didn't make noise about it, mm. uh, uh, and and nobody took up. Black people are killed in farms in South Africa more than white people, mm. not because they are in majority, but it's them who are being killed. We don't we don't get skin issues of white people being killed, and this is where we should put the constitution. You know, constitutional rights of, of people, but we change a number of things. Sure. Children aged from 21 to 18, sad stories of, you know, one thing about our constitution that I will, I will never forgive lawmakers in this country is to allow, and this is very controversial, mm. an age of sex in South Africa, according to the laws of this country, it's age 16. You know, when you are 16 and above, you are, you are allowed to say you have consented to sex. Sure. Okay. But the age of adulthood or majority is 18. Sure. There's a disjuncture there already. Mm. When do you become an adult at 18? But at 16, you can have sex. It's okay. They allowed it. But the worst is, we have abortion laws in this country. Mm. Do you know that, Fresh and the viewers, that a child at age 12, a girl, yes. let me not even say a child, a girl at age 12 mm. can decide to go and have an abortion without the consent of the parent. Mm. Mm. Illegal abortion. Mm. Now, 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 that's where the disjuncture is. I don't know what were the lawmakers thinking that time that we say you can't have unconsented, you can't have sex under the age of 16. Yeah, because if you're 12, then you were raped. Yes, if you're 12, you were raped. It was that, you, you might have consented because you think statutory you have rape. agents. Yes. But it's still statutory rape. Yeah, so, so if you are 14 and you find yourself pregnant, you can walk into a clinic. Mm. And have a portion without your parents knowing, mm. or, or 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 your boyfriend or whoever, and you can see the disjuncture in our laws. And with all the mothers in parliament uh, making laws, I, I don't understand what went wrong. But those are some of the things that I personally would like to see sure. changes in the constitution, especially the land question. And when I speak of land, you all know I'm speaking about the economy, yes. whether it's the sea, the rivers, the mountains, the what, all the land with its economy, and that's what I want to see. Um, let's stay in Parliament. Uh, just quickly, uh, Zandile Mafe um, allegedly burnt Parliament, um, allegedly says he burnt it because Parliament should not be in Cape Town. It must either be in Bloom or in Pretoria. Sorry, yeah. And now we are told he is not mentally fit to stand trial. Yes. Uh, yeah. Looking at the courts. You know the the, the, the Zandile story, uh, uh, Mafe. Is it Mafe? Ne? Mafe, yes. Yeah, it, it's so funny because there's a self confession, and it, you know I, I don't understand why would uh, he think the parliament must not be in Cape Town. I mean, he's a Cape Townian. He benefits by being there for having parliament there. Nonetheless, I'm one of the people that says the parliament should have never been in Cape Town. Mm. So we are the, we are the only country on earth which has three capital cities. Mm. We've got administrative capital, which is Tswane or Pretoria. Then we've got the the judicial capital, which is Bloemfontein. And then we've got the legislative uh, capital, which is Cape Town, mm. uh, waste of resources. And I think it was to accommodate uh, the opposition party to keep it there. But Zandile's uh, 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 defense, uh, I think at some stage he was represented by advocate Mpo for the senior council. Mm. They had said uh, they applied for a mental evaluation and a review. And the results that came out was that he is unfit to can stay a trial. The, the, the results, meaning the psychological assessment mm. or psychiatric assessment, had said he's unfit to can stand trial. I, I so, think, yeah, I think it was assessed by three different uh, psychiatrists. Yes, yes. Uh, who've all uh, come to the same conclusion. They've come to the same conclusion. Mm. So, yeah, the man is going to walk scot free, I think, you know, as per the law. Uh, well, not scot free, maybe he will be, he'll be condemned to a psychiatric institution. But he's not going to stand trial for arson and go to jail. And that's, that's where we are as a nation. Let's stay in Cape Town. Um, now there's an impasse, uh, there's been an impasse uh, over the last uh, week or so um, between uh, taxi operators and uh, the city of Cape Town. Mm. City of Cape Town uh, impounding uh, taxis and uh, Santaco saying it's unfair that we are being targeted and you're not applying the same stringent uh, uh, laws and bylaws to other motorists. And yeah. that why are you impounding our businesses? Because that is what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, the they, ANC are obviously going to flip it and say uh, it's the DA flexing their muscles before the elections. They they played a political game. And let me just put that, that disclosure first. Yes. That, uh, due to the nature of my official duties, I cannot 
a talk on this platform or any platform about uh, transport issues. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, but I will talk about it from the political point of view that you have raised to yeah. say the DA and ANC have went into a political battle. It's gone, it's gone polit uh, political it's gone very fast. Politics completely. For me, it's no longer about the, the Santa and the taxes and all that. I will look at this and talk about it from the legal perspective mm. to say uh, the national laws are binding all over and everybody in mm. the country. Mm. And obviously municipalities may have bylaws uh, constitutionally that are different from one municipality to another. But in this instance, looking at the national laws of the you know uh, Road Transportation Act or National Land Transport Act, uh, that the city of Cape Town is relying on, they are all at fault. Mm. That's the first part. Mm. If you are relying on the national one, we are all at fault. But also let us just be a little bit practical. You know, I always say to people, there's two organizations that are not political, mm. but they've got political power. It's SAFA, they are, they are run politically. Mm. What's, when SAFA cops the ruling party shakes, you can see how powerful SAFA you know, leaders are in the ruling party, despite the fact that Danny Jordan was, was, was you know, a, a, a mayor of uh, Nelson Mandela Bay at some stage, uh, which is going to today. The second one is the, it's Santaco, and Santaco is not the only taxi association in the mm -hmm. country. We have the National uh, Taxi uh, uh, Association, NTA. Mm -hmm. But you must see that you will always hear about Santaco, Santaco, Santaco. And Santaco received, receives money from the state, the other one doesn't. And Santaco's headquarters are in the same building as the Department of Transport, just for information, just mm -hmm. sitting there. Mm -hmm. So, so I think there's a political battle between the DA and the ANC. The, the, the DA will, be, it will not be wrong in applying municipal bylaws, but what you should do is you must apply it across the board. So yes. if Fresh is driving in Cape Town, don't target a specific don't group. Don't target a specific group. Yeah. And I think that is discrimination if you are doing that. Mm -hmm. You understand? And, and also, we know that we are the taxi owners or we are the taxi users. It's black people in this country. So I think the DA is shooting itself in the foot in, in, the, in the city of Cape Town because it will look like they are targeting uh, 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 taxis which are used by blacks and owned by black people. So, so there is that issue. But also, you know, I was thinking about it. Uh, what are they trying to do in the city of Cape Town with this? They are actually trying to satisfy and excite their constituency. Oh, yeah. The DA constituency in Cape Town is literally foreign people who are rich and who don't use taxis. Mm. And it's white people. So if these people are not happy about the way the taxis operate and conduct themselves and their irritants, and they will take business from most probably white-owned uh, businesses within the city within the city, like the e Howley and other forms of transport that we find in Cape Town. So I think it's a political battle, uh, a, a, with a very distasteful political battle, that you, you, you find a national minister, such a, not even one, not only of the transport, I even hear the minister of police was involved in this whole thing, pointing fingers at each other mm. at the expense of the nation, at the expense of the masses. So I think the sooner this issue gets resolved, the better for the people of Cape Town and the surrounding areas. Uh, 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 we saw you know, how bad it is that people cannot even go to work. Yeah. So the impact on and there's even loss of life because of this whole thing. Mm. And, and again, French, this is like sending people to prison. We've got an overcrowding prison as an example. Now, if you are going to take a person who has stolen a chicken in a supermarket and you send them to two months in prison when we have overcrowded, I don't say people must not be in prison, mm. charged and found guilty for their own doing. But imagine sitting there and impounding a vehicle. The cost of impounding, picking it up, mm. storing it, and all of that, whether the cost goes to the owner or the, 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 the you know, illegal uh, uh, bad driver or the city, but there's a cost involved, somebody somehow. And for what? You know, for not paying your fines, for, for uh, you didn't have a number plate. Yes, it's a rule that a vehicle must have a number plate. It's a rule that mm -hmm. the vehicle must have a valid disc. You understand? It all happens. But imagine if all unroadworthy, mm -hmm. and roadworthy is not only being physically worthy. It means you must have documents for the mm -hmm. vehicle. Mm -hmm. Imagine if all unroadworthy vehicles in a city like Jobek or Tswani are getting pounded, we'll come to stand still as a nation. And I, don't, I do not condone lawlessness. But in applying laws, rules, and regulations, you don't have to be rigid. Mm. You have to be very flexible and look at, you know, a balance of probabilities. Now the president could not go and have his Women's Month in Bizo 
in the city of Cape Town mm. because of this. BRICS is sitting in the city of Cape Town very soon. And this thing is happening. And somebody was saying, do the check balances. The DA has been talking to the United States. The DA has been engaging the United States as a provincial, not a municipal. Do you think it's a possible means. sabotage of the BRICS summit? Want to let's sabotage the BRICS summit. It's not coming here. We are part of the United States of America, not the Republic of South Africa. Therefore, we are not going to allow BRICS to come and sit in 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 the Republic of Cape Town. Yeah, I mean, look, it's political. Mm. I don't rule that out. Understand? To say why did this happen now? Uh, drivers, and I don't want to talk about taxis, drivers generally in the Republic of South Africa, mm. we are bad drivers generally. There's a general lawlessness. There it is. A disregard and for we, we, basic we traffic. We actually, road as routes. a yeah. nation, yeah. have one of the worst road fatalities in the world. Mm. We are on the top five, I think so, of the world. Mm. Road fatalities. We are bad drivers, less lawlessness. Now, why, if there's been lawlessness for all these years, you will have to wait for this critical moment? where there are a number of lined up events that must happen in Cape Town and you just start impounding 6,000 taxis. So why don't they also impound other vehicles that mm. are breaking the laws in Cape Town? Why only the taxis? Mm. You know, what about other road users? You can't tell me that everybody who drives in Cape Town adheres to the rules and regulations. And, 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 and my argument is, you know, sanction people, but don't take the vehicles. Also, because, I mean, if I'm giving Botsang my vehicle, uh, Botsang is my driver. Yes, an employee. And Botsang drinks. Um, one, I, I can't monitor that Botsang was drinking. Exactly. So arrest Botsang. Throw him in jail. That's what you need to do. But mm. give me back my vehicle. Yes. I mean, imagine if every truck that transgresses the rules of the road was impounded. Absolutely. What would happen? What would happen? There'd be zero on. delivery. There'd exactly. be zero delivery. Exactly. So we can't impound people's businesses unless the vehicle is not roadworthy. Exactly. Then it's a different it's story. It's a different story. But keep the car. Yeah. Uh, keep the vehicle until it's roadworthy again. But reckless driving, over speeding, you jumping the robot. You, can't, you, you, you can't. You can't. You see, there's something I've learned in, in my career about imp uh, impounding of vehicles. Yeah. And uh, uh, when, when legal people were talking to me about it, you know, it was a lesson yeah. that courts require uh, evidence of a product that was used to commit a crime. True. Uh, uh, let me make an example. If you are transporting people from here to uh, Mozambique mm. and they cross the way and then the police find drugs in your vehicle in this instance, mm. they will have to impound the vehicle even if the drugs were carried by a passenger. The sure. driver would not know what is in the vehicle. So what people are talking about is that all legal you know, eagles mm. are saying the court will say what was the mode of transporting that thing. Mm. And look, we're talking public transport here. It's a sure. difference. You know, for me, it's a public transport and you are correct when you say if the driver who is an employee misbehaves at work, mm. do not punish. Like if you are in a factory and you are driving a forklift and the regulation is that you can't use that machinery, which is a forklift, mm. under the influence of alcohol. And somebody decides to come to work and he injures mm. somebody at work. There are regulations of somebody being injured at work and, and misconduct of an employee. But you don't go and shut that factory. Because one employee came to work under the influence of alcohol. And I think it's the same principle. Don't punish the business. Don't punish the business, but punish and punish within the legal framework as well and be reasonable. The laws are not are not there actually to punish people, but to regulate us to behave and conduct ourselves in a certain manner. Sure. And and not just we should not just be punitive for the sake of being punitive. We 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 are a democratic state, a constitutional state. And I think, you know, those are some of the things they should be looking into. But I hope they resolve this Cape Town issue as soon as possible. Yes. By the way, talking of BRICS, uh, uh, I suspect, and we will talk about it next week, that the, the heads of states of BRICS, except the host, obviously, may boycott the BRICS uh, uh, summit. In fact, um, a week ago, there was talk uh, that Modi of India would not be attending. Yes. But um, um, Minister Pando says... It's a rumor, and it's not true that uh, um, Modi did not say he's not attending the BRICS summit representing India. Yeah. Look, what, what transpired, I don't know if it was a rumor, but what I've learned it transpired is that even President Ramaphosa engaged him mm. to say, no, but you can't do that now. What doesn't make sense is the reason why Modi wouldn't want to attend now. Mm. Well, that doesn't make sense because they, 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 what the media gave out was that he is... 
uh, very concerned and worried about the conduct of China. You know, there's that old mm -hmm. historical battle of China occupying uh, a part of India uh, mm -hmm. where I practice my my, my, my spiritual Tibet. part. Yes. So, yes. so I, I think that, but it can't be the reason now because India and China have been in the bricks all along. So I partially want to agree with Minister Pando to say it doesn't make sense, but where there's smoke, you know, there's, there's fire. I think the talk is going along those lines. It will not surprise me. It will not surprise me that too. we will see BRICS event going ahead, but without the heads of states. It won't surprise me if it happens. It's yeah. a wait and see situation. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, Minister Gordon writing a letter to management at ESCOM. What is that letter about? Uh, Minister Gordon actually reminded me of a, a fellow from the Northwest Province, mm. uh, uh, the former premier of the Northwest Province, uh, who was also the chairperson uh, of, oh, uh, uh, oh, what's, uh, of, of the ANC. Giving himself a hearing. Yes, uh, okay. the, 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 the chairperson of the ANC mm. wrote to the premier of the province according to the directive. <laughs> so, 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 Minister, Minister Godan reminds me of that situation. What Minister Godan has done he has written to the management of ESCOM, mm. obviously the board and the executive, firstly to inform them that he is exercising his powers according to some PFMA mm. uh, 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 rule or, or option. He's exercising those powers by disbanding and selling, let's use the word, he's mm. selling the distribution lake of ESCOM. Mm. And remember which leg is that? It's the leg that has been on the news, that created problems, mm -hmm. the thefts, the millions, the wrong deliveries. So he's selling it and bundling it to another state-owned company, another SOE. So he's removing it from ESCOM mm -hmm. to another one. But that SOC does not exist. He has created it within the Department of uh, Public Enterprises. So he creates a company mm -hmm. in his own department that will actually take the powers of a certain chunk, a giant, you know, big chunk of S commerce distribution responsibility mm -hmm. to this state owned company. But you know what? It is still in the same department. He's just removing it from the management of S mm -hmm. directly and the board. So this will no longer be reporting. That leak mm -hmm. will no longer be reporting to, to S board. Is it a good or a bad thing? Should we, we be concerned? Look, uh, uh, there, there, there's two ways. Um, it, 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 there has been a lot of corruption. I think they are trying, or he is trying with his team mm. to deal with the corrupt activities of the distribution battle, sure. but in a wrong way. Mm. You understand? Moving it and creating another state owned entity that will cost them more. Uh, in terms of personnel and running another mm. company within the same, it doesn't make sense. Mm. Deal with the problem. The problem is corruption. The problem is theft. The problem is delivering materials of inferior quality. Mm. And 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 taking the problem and shifting it somewhere, it means you're not dealing with it. You are shifting. You may find the same problems on the other side. But I am just afraid that this may be another Pravin Godan's strategy mm. of selling state-owned companies to people who are very close to him, and they, like they did with, with the, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 post-net, not uh, post-net as well as the transnet part. Mm -hmm. It may be someone says, who's going to be the CEO, the board, and everything of this company? What are their interests? If they are selling it to them, where is the money going to come from that is going to buy this leg or this branch of ESCOM, mm -hmm. uh, this new entity? Where, where are they going to get money? Are they going to state resources to buy state resources? But who will be the shareholders? Who will be the stakeholders? That's something we must watch. All right. And uh, watch it we shall. We are two weeks into Niger having a military uh, ruler. Yes. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Minister of Finance has been brought in. Yes. They've, they've now brought in a Minister of Finance to come and stabilize, because remember what they did is they, they've cut uh, uh, foreign exports uh, that was controlled by France and French mm -hmm. companies, mm -hmm. French banks. So you obviously need uh, a, a money person to can handle those things. They, I think that was the right move. They needed a Minister of Finance mm -hmm. uh, earlier and quicker than anything, else, especially with sanctions, you know, under them and all those minerals that are being fought for. In, 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 in fact, one thing that really struck a, a note with me uh, was with the the, the, the new military uh, dude in Niger saying, we've been having aid from France for over 50 years and we're still poor. 
in so if they stop it, we'll be fine. Yeah. We, we, we will just be forced to work harder. Well, what benefit have they derived from France aiding them? France takes 100 bucks from Mali mm -hmm. and gives them 11 bucks. Mm -hmm. And Mali is one of the poorest countries on earth with the richest minerals on earth. So you have been suffering. So why stay in a situation that perpetuated your suffering? You know, from colonialism to today, Mali didn't improve on anything. You know, one thing that blows my mind, um, especially with a lot of our leaders on the continent, the fact that Niger is supplying all this uranium to France so that France can have electricity across the entire country. And nuclear weapons. But your average Nigerian doesn't have electricity. Yes. Zero. Yes. They supply... Like, how does it make sense? Well, it's, it's Africa lacking leaders. That's why most of the people in the continent at the moment, you know, decolonizing of the mind. People mm. are saying, but this course, let us look back. It's not just like the military is taking over. If they are progressive mm. course, and they are for the people, then we will support them. And we have had successful coups actually, in, in Africa. One of them that is actually, you know, the highlight of the African politics is Thomas Sankara. Mm. That was a military captain, came to become the, the, the president. He cut his own salary. He cut all the benefits for the sake of the people. Mm. And he made Burkina Faso not to be a dependent country anymore. So it's, it takes leadership. Mm. You know, the continent lacks leadership, whereby it's the same with us in South Africa. Platinum, gold, diamonds that are leaving the country. But a day plowing back, we get finished product. It's expensive for me and you mm. to buy a diamond ring or a gold ring that is finished somewhere and they come back here. But I think that's exploitation of the minerals in, mm. in, in Mali. The, the world has opened up now. There are other countries who will be interested and, and, and that can get into deals with Mali to use the Niger. uranium, with Niger, sorry, yeah. and, and, and to benefit from that. And let the country benefit. Let Niger benefit from their natural resources. Mm. And, and why should I give you my natural resources that are worth trillions of dollars? And you tell me you are giving me foreign aid. Why are you aiding me when you are actually dependent on me? Exactly. France is actually dependent. I'm keeping your lights on. I'm keeping your lights on. I'm helping you create light bulbs. France today yeah. may bomb Niger with chemical weapons or military weapons that were made with the uranium from Mali. And that's what they are threatening to do. But I, I also doubt, I think the West will be very cheeky should they go into war with, 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 with Mali. They, they will actually, they with Niger, they will actually demonstrate how much they don't care about lives in Africa. They'll be very cheeky because at the moment, countries like Russia, you know, uh, 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 and, and other interested countries around uh, 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 Niger, like Mali, Burkina Faso, Algeria, and 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 and, and Guinea, has stood up and said, "You are not touching our brother. We are brothers in arms. We'll team up together as nations. You are not going to impose economic sanctions. You can impose economic sanctions. You understand? They're not fly zone. They're still flying between each other. And I want to see. I'm surprised that other regional bodies like SADC." as well as the East African community, the EAC, have been silent instead of engaging their brother uh, 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 West African ECOWAS. Mm -hmm. I, I think they should have, uh, because it's going to impact on other regions as well. Whatever is happening Absolutely. at ECOWAS will impact mm -hmm. on SADAC, will impact on the EAC. But I don't think there's been enough diplomatic engagement between the three regional bodies that are playing a very important role for peacekeeping in Africa. The AU as well as the continental body can sit there and just support ECOWAS without looking at the fundamental mm -hmm. problems in that region. Uh, uh, are, are, the, are, are the military rulers of Niger wrong? Mm -hmm. Or are the issues they are raising uh, uh, not important for the people of it? If we care about the people of Niger, then why don't we engage and listen diplomatically and peacefully with this military government instead of just imposing sanctions on them and as well as threatening them with a military, you know, operation? Uh, and I think that's the concern. That's something I'm concerned with. And I, I think, you know, for the longest time, African leaders have had this brood scup where, yes, there's meant to be a peer review mechanism within the AU. Yeah. But... Everyone minds their own business. Yeah, they mind Everyone their own business. You know, guys are running their countries into the ground. 
Uh, and and then when the military wake up and say, actually, no, this is rubbish. Yeah. Then we wake up and say, yeah, what of democracy? Uh, exactly. We we are sitting with a situation whereby we see heads of states in the continent mm. destroying the lives of their own people. You know, uh, jailing people undemocratically, unconstitutionally, changing laws as they were staying in power forever. And we are quiet about it. We are silent as diplomats about it. Instead of engaging when the problem is not expanding. Mm. You know, but now the problem is out of hand. The military comes and says, no, but we are taking charge of our own country. Then we want to jump in. That's double-sided. Then, you know, that's, you know, you are, you are, you are double-dipping, actually. Sure. When it suits, as if, as if military, military states are a wrong thing. There's nothing wrong with military states as long as they are there to serve the nation. I, I, I said the other day, I wouldn't mind to live under a dictator or a king or, or, or military, but as long as that person serves the interest of the people. Now, why do we want a West imposed mm. through a democratic process? Elections that we know, you buy elections. E mm. Elections and democracy is money. And, and the West, uh, over the last uh, at least 50, 60 years, we know um, have propped up governments that they prefer. Exactly. They've funded governments that they prefer. And they're still They've assassinated it. people that they don't like. Exactly. They, and they've done it. They assassinated them. You look at Patrice Lumumba, Thomas Sankara, everywhere. Mm. The regime change that happened in Latin America. Mm. The regime change that happened in, in the Middle East, you understand? It, it is because the West was funding, though, to say... Uh, there's no democratic government there, but who in this world said a democratic government is the right government? We are, we are living in a democratic messed up state in South Africa at the moment. Mm. It is not as worse as in other countries. You understand? There, there, there's been democracy in, 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 in Zimbabwe. For all this, says, there's been elections, but we know what was going on with the William Party rigging elections like it's happening all over the world. We saw it in Brazil. We saw it in Venezuela. Sure. So now the people of a country, for me, is what the people want. The people of a nation, the nation stands up and says, we are tired of this. The nice thing about Niger mm. is that we saw the citizens rallying behind the military. Mm. Now, who are we from outsiders to say you can't have a coup there? Okay, when the people of that country says we are tired of these old people that we are electing, and we know we are not actually electing them. Those with money are determining who's going to win power, and they're not saving our interests. Exactly going back to your question. To say, a president of the country has uranium. He mm. produces electricity, and his country does not have electricity. How? How? Mm. So you take those people out. Mm. The military, maybe they must be on a transitional phase, mm. whereby they will say, we will install democracy and civilian rule. Once we put people here, who will come and serve the interest of the nation. And I think this is the beginning of an African rebellion against the former colonizers to say colonialism didn't end. You know, I was telling somebody last week to say when people talk of independence, mm. which state is independent in Africa? Mm. They're not independent. And we can use Niger as an example to say they gained independence from, from uh, France over 50 years back, but they're still dependent on foreign aid from France. So wh where is independence there? Mm. There's no independence. When people celebrate Independence Day, Independent from what? And giving people the parliament, but ha hanging on to the banks is not independence. It's, it's not. It's, all a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a false sense of where you're in control. You're not in control. Exactly. You give them parliament, mm. and and you, then you de you decide, as the former uh, 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 colonizer, who will sit in that parliament? How will that person conduct himself? So there's no freedom, and there's no there, there, there's no uh, independence from the former colonizers. I think that this military coup. I, I am not for loss of life. Mm. I am not for uh, 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 people, you know, uh, lawlessness and no regulations. But anything, anything that will uproot mm. the evil of colonialism from Africa, we as Africans, we should actually support it. You know, you you know when you take a tree and you cut it off, mm. and you still have leave the roots. And the soil is fertile and the rainfall is good. After some time, that tree will be up again. So we did not uproot mm. the evil of colonialism in Africa. That's why we are sitting here. We are still talking in English while we are two Botswana boys. You know, and, and what, we, what, what uh, you know, uh, reason will we give? Mm. Say, no, no, no. But our followers are not only Botswana speaking people. Okay, that makes sense. We can get away with that one. But we did not uproot the evil of mm. colonialism as Africans. And I think these military people, they must help us to speed it up. 30 years in South Africa, we're still complaining about the Constitution. Mm. And, and, and these are some of the causes 
of military coups or, or even overthrowing of government. Sure. You, you know, it doesn't have to be the military, but it can be any other way. Some countries, they just go on mass protests. Mm. And, and, and it happened in Egypt, where there was mass protests that, that, that and they brought a government down sure. without the military happening. Mm. So there's a different way in changing government despite elections and coups. Mass mobilization and mass protests are some of the tools that could be used. I think on that note, uh, let's uh, nip it in the bud. Thank Thanks, you, my Thank you as always, uh, Botsang. Where do we find you on social media? Where do we buy you? Uh, on social media, botsangm at gmail.com. And you may also go into my Facebook pages, Botsang. We will send a message there. Or you may actually WhatsApp 082-485-9100. And I've seen very positive comments about the show. Yesterday, I spent a lot of time responding to 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 some of the comments about some of the videos were very positive ones. People are very actually people are finding this show and this platform very educative mm -hmm. and informative. And I like when people say I give balanced views. Yeah, I don't like when everybody praises me. Somebody must <laughs> criticize me. I give balanced views and I'm not afraid to talk. They don't know that me not being afraid to talk has got me into a lot of trouble. Yep. But I'm already immune to troubles. Absolutely. And uh, that's uh, this week's edition of uh, Hashtag Politrix. We are coming to you from Amp Studios, downtown Johannesburg. Shout out to Africa Podcast Network. Pezulu works for the cinematography. Otis the Flo Frazier for all of our imaging. Our guest, Botsang Mudimwa Memui Lua. Creative director, Kuvesh Mohan. And our show producer, Kele Somudisa King. Thank you for hanging out with us. You can email waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. Have a great Politrix week in spite of yourselves.